Hello everybody, welcome to another Adoc Online. Today I have a very special guest, Miss Sarah Lander, who's a first year student here at Tyndale. The reason she's here is that the question is, should Christians practice yoga? And Sarah has written a paper on this and is therefore now somewhat of an expert on the subject. Now you may be looking at me and saying, what in the world do you know about yoga? And it may be apparent to you that I don't actually have a yoga body. If this is not apparent to you, you probably need a visit to your local optometrist. But what we're trying to do here today is actually to take the Christian worldview and explore whether or not uh, yoga is compatible with it. As you may know, yoga is a series of poses that are really designed to uh, tone the muscle, to give the body strength and flexibility, but also and significantly to uh, clear the mind and allow for meditation. It's very old, it goes back to the five to 600 BC range, about the time of the prophet Jeremiah. And the challenge we have it, of course, with it, of course, is not the physicality of it, it is the connection to Eastern religions, uh, namely Buddhism and Hinduism, who have used this for uh, meditative purposes. So where does that leave the Christian? Well, the question is whether or not we can separate the physical poses and enjoy yoga in terms of the stretching and the exercise without participating in the spiritual aspect of it. In that sense, it is no different than many of the martial arts, for example, Taekwondo or Karate, uh, others which are popular, which are everyone also tied to various Eastern religions, but we've managed to learn the craft of the sport without necessarily becoming entangled in the history or the philosophical religious aspects of it. Uh, so let me bring Sarah in on this now as she is ready to go. So Sarah, if every yoga pose represents a different Buddhist god, uh, wouldn't that necessarily mean that doing yoga is the same as worshipping somebody other than our god? Um, I don't see it like that so much. I see it as it all depends on your mindset, right? So you could have your mindset solely on our god and it should be fine. Why else would it be? Because you're not going to, unless you're going out like purposely worshipping another god with the yoga that you're doing, then it should be fine. Um, it also says in the Bible that we have to take care of our bodies because it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. So doing that, um, if yoga is your way of stretching and stuff and you're focusing on God, then I don't see a problem with the whole yoga. Good. Uh, do you feel like we could be mocking another religion? So if some religions take this very serious, do you feel like we could be mocking that religion by by practicing their form of exercise? Um, the thing with that is that um, people take our form of worshipping all the time and we don't think twice about it. We go to rock concerts and stuff like that and we see people raising their hands and stuff to the beat and all that kinds of stuff. They also bring have like wine and bread all the time and stuff like that and we don't think twice about uh, that as mocking our religion even though that's our form of communion. True. Okay. Is it wise even, never mind sin, is it wise for us to put ourselves in this kind of place of temptation? In your learned opinion. <laughs> um, I think that it's no different than any social media that we have, including Facebook, um, because there's so many things on social media and on your phones and stuff that you have access to that can cause the same temptation. Well, not the same type, but like um, temptation in itself. So like pornography or like hating your neighbor. It's so easy to judge other people on social media and stuff like that. And you can also listen to more explicit music, which can give you that temptation as well. So even our involvement here on social media involves a form of discernment on our part. We are, there. it's possible to go widely astray on social media, uh, but we discern and we redeem, we use for good, hopefully that's what this is, and we're wise in how we use it so as to honor and glorify the Lord. So you would see yoga that way, we can exercise and do it to glorify the Lord rather than get entangled in the religious aspects of it. So I think that's where we've landed, Sarah and I, is that if you are going to practice yoga, and the same would apply for the martial arts, 
find a teacher who emphasizes the physical aspects of it and the benefits of the exercise and not so much the religious or philosophical aspects of it. Uh, in everything you do, the Bible says, do for the glory of God. And so stretch, exercise, meditate on the good things of God, and in that way, uh, preserve your temple to the glory of God. This is Miss Sarah Lander and I for Doc Online. Thank <music> you.